Okay, so today I bought myself a uh, remote antenna switch. It is an Ameritron RCS 8V. It comes with the relay box and the remote head switch. Um, it's not too bad. I don't have it all wired up because I was just uh, took it out of the box and inspecting and testing, which you should do with all Ameritron MFJ stuff before you put it into service, and I will tell you why. Um, sometimes their quality slides by, and I have noticed it with the relays. Um, I wanted these relay relays to act as a short on the ports that are unused. And in the manual, it states that, uh, let's see, unselected antenna ports may be automatically grounded or isolated. Um, it is shipped with the ports isolated to automatically ground the unse uh, unselected port. Short, uh, short jumper must be installed as shown in figure 2. Um, from this point of the contact to this point of the contact, which is one side of the relay, you're basically shorting out. And uh, do not ground, um, it tells you don't solder to these sides of the grounds. Alright, I had to grab the phone there. So, what you have to do is short. Let's see if I can get some uh, a little better lighting here. You have to put shorts in right here. And all the way around. Every single relay. As you can tell, the uh, the solder from Ameritron is a little bit of a cold solder joints. Um, I probably may retouch these up, but I may not for a reason. And that reason is that um, I don't want to put any more added heat onto these contacts because what I've noticed is if you plan to select to ground your ice, uh, ground your uh, antenna ports when they're not used. Um, you will notice that some of these contacts do not touch the um, the cross piece between these uh, two contacts here. So this is how it shorts. It shorts across to these two and then your RF is redirected to that port. Uh, so when it's grounded, these two contacts rest on the back two um, set of contacts, which in theory shorts that port to ground when it's not being used. But what I've noticed from the factory, if I'll pull this, actually you can remove these contacts if you pull them out gently you can see what's going on here they're just um, chained across to the other contacts so it just when you make a contact here and here it's gonna, the RF's gonna flow uh, across the relay and same thing with this side and what I had to do is I had to tweak these set of contacts these one, that one right there, uh, was not making contact with the other contact on the, uh, on the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, um, the actual contact here, this piece, there's an actual specific name, but I can't think of it right now, um, it was, it wasn't, it was making contact on one side, and the other side was just a little bit off, like, maybe about, like, like that so what happens is it doesn't have a path to ground so even though your port is unused it's not grounded so I had to tweak one of these relays to to uh, be back into spec and I assume that maybe it was due to overheating or twisting the relay during assembly or um, some manufacturing flaw so just check that when you're done jumping all these jumpers just go ahead and take your own meter and um, this one is not going to be ground anymore because I pulled the the contactor out of it. But see, how it's not not uh, not short anymore. But now these these are. So now, when you select your antenna with the selector box, uh, the pull will become ungrounded, and it'll be a path to the input. Simple. So, I mean, it's not a real complicated setup. It's just you have to just take a peek at it before you put it into service. Like I said, I actually just have a set of jumpers here, and I hooked them up, and I made, I cycled every one of these relays multiple times and just made sure that they had flow path from input to the, uh, the, to the port. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about the ground because the ground is all on this back plane here. So just make sure when you select your port, you have contact from here to the port you, you, you're you uh, testing. And that should be good. Um, let me think here. What else do we want to know about this? Oh, uh, to turn this into a little bit more efficient uh, antenna switch, uh, I wasn't too appealed about the cover. Uh, I did not like the fact that it was not shielded. Uh, it's just plastic. So what I may end up doing is lining this up with uh, tin foil just to get a little bit of a more of an RF shield. Um, I'd like to use copper but copper is very expensive and uh, tin foil is in my drawer so guess what? Tin foil is going in it. I'm just going to probably just throw a little bit of spray adhesive in there and just uh, foil the inside of this box so when it covers it it will be you know as best as uh, you know shielded as best as it possibly can be uh, minus the material so I'm going to try and uh, line that and we'll see you in the next video alright so I have my cover of my box and centered in this um, probably uh, 16 by 16 square of tin foil and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I drew lines vertically from where the ends are and I drew a square in the middle so what you should have left is something like this and these little lines here, these extra lines are actually going to be a crease for the fold on the edge when I cut these corners out so when I fold this in um, it will sit flat on the bottom, I'll be able to fold these edges up and then in theory I should be able to fold these edges up and have a little bit of uh, overlap between the, the seam. Um, this is the outside dimension of the top cover so this should be a little bit smaller when you go to cut it so keep that in mind because it will be a little bit, it's going to have to be probably about uh, an, eighth, an eighth inch uh, smaller square. Uh, what you can do is you can you know retrace the inside line. So I'm just going to use this as a guide and I'm going to cut it. Okay, so now roughly you should have something that looks like this. And this is going to go in the center. Uh, we're going to fold these edges up, but we're not going to fold it on the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ruler um, across a little inside these lines. And I'm going to fold one edge up individually. And then I'm going to put it in the box, fold the edges over, and then I'm going to trim along the edge to get the final height. Now if you've done your job right, it should remote resemble something like this. Uh, it will fit in there somewhat uh, snugly and you may have a little bunching in the corners where the uh, where the screw mount holes are, uh, the studs are. So I'm not going to worry about that now. I just want to get a rough size, get it in there, and then I'm going to unfold it um, one piece at a time. Uh, it's all folded up, so I'm going to fold it up and roll it around the edge and you know, don't make a crease. And then when I'm all done, it should uh, it should be a well uh, shielded box. Alright, now if you've done your job right, it should resemble, resemble something like this. Uh, so you should be able to just be able to slide it out, you know. And, actually so tight that if I try to move it it won't come out but um, it should look something like that it's not going to be perfect uh, but it's probably going to be a lot better shielding than just putting a plastic cover over your um, hard work generated RF into this box uh, you don't want it uh, uh, anything interfering from the outside so uh, don't know 100% if this is going to work, but, uh, you know, I don't know what it's, I don't even know what it's like before I put this foil in here because I just got this thing, but, uh, common sense tells me that this cover should be shielded, and I do believe on some higher-end model DX engineering versions there are, uh, they do use a, uh, shielded cover. It only makes sense to me, so I am going to go with it and see how it works. Okay, so I have the thing all spray adhesive in there and uh, flattened out as best as I could. And I have pretty much good shielding all the way around um, the sides and the bottom, or the top, whichever way you want to look at it. So now when I put this cover over this, it's got the 
the wrong way. And I'll put the cover over it. That foil should make somewhat contact with this aluminum plate here. And because they are similar metals, it shouldn't be a corrosion problem. And I think that will, I think that may make a well shielded enclosure. So, see what happens. We'll, uh, when I go and put it up and test it and test the uh, match and, and see if how it works. So, I uh, hope this gives somebody some good ideas. And like I said, it's untested. I don't know if it works, but it just makes sense to me.